I can tell you right now that if you have XRP and have been paying attention to some of the things going on with Ripple and XRP in particular, you're starting to get a clear picture. If you're not, that's fine. We are going to talk about what the U.S. is doing behind the scenes with the Federal Reserve in relation to Ripple and even XRP at the end of this video. It also kind of has to do with Ripple and XRP. That being said, welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Nick. If this video is your first time on the channel, I hope you decide to join by the end. Guys, if you're not in the free Discord, you're missing out on a lot of free news. If you haven't already, you should join that free Discord. It's the best crypto Discord out there. That's what I put everything on. For men, there will be a link in the text below if you want to join. You won't be sorry if you join it now. Now that we know that, let's talk about some other things. We need to talk about Ripples while Miami. A lot of fun to be had. From October 15th to 16th, it looks like we're starting to learn more about this, right? In earlier videos, I talked about Ripple Swell 2024, also known as Miami. Now we're starting to learn more. As an example, Ripple's yearly flagship event provides a lively setting for stimulating conversations, groundbreaking discoveries, and unmatched chances to network. Check out the guests that will be there. That's funny, CEO Brad Garthinghouse is there, but so is the head of the New York State Department of Financial Services, who used to be chair of the FDIC and was the first chair of the Systemic Risk Council. There's Coinbase, BBVA, and CME Group. Along with Monica Long, president of Ripple, we also have Stuart Alderati, chief legal officer of Ripple, Lead Bank, Bitwise, MoonPay, the Blockchain Association, and Revolut. 2TM, Holding Mercado Bitcoin, Crypto.com, Bloomberg, Kraken, and more Ripple employees, as well as Chamber of Progress and Securities. There are a lot of big names that will be at this event talking about specific things and how we can really get past some of the problems in the space and get to mass adoption and use of crypto as well. The event is going to be really exciting. I can't hold out any longer. Please tell me what you think in the room below. Not long from now in October, we should understand more. I think that sometime around the middle of September, we should have the full agenda broken down here. This is because once again, we don't have too many exact breakdowns of the agenda. It could just be this, we don't know. But if we look more closely, we can see that this page is about payments, rules and regulations, steady coins, storage, and the future of crypto. There are a few things about the XRP system and XRP that I'm sure will get a lot of attention. There are also trends in our field. Really happy about this. This seems like a great place to hold the event. I also think it will be a great event. More than 600 people show up, more than 80 speakers, people from more than 40 countries, and almost every wave is followed by some great news. I'm really happy about this. Also, a big thank you to Anderson for this. We have a great group of artists lined up for Swell at 2024 in Miami. Just came out with biggest names and key speakers. The first question is about Coinbase. Could they work with Ripple? Okay, let's hope. There were also people there from the FDICCME group and the New York State Department of Financial Services. They just finally put out an XRP reference rate and real-time benchmark, so it makes sense that they're there. Seems to be focused on rules and following them. It makes sense that the NYA DFS is there now that Ripple has bought standard custody, which is where the license came from. Speakers could also talk about relationships. We remember that MasterCard was at Splits 2022, and that they announced a relationship with Ripple in 2023. As I already said, those big reveals happen all the time. Then there's the CPMI group, of course. Ripple buys NYDFS, which is a controlled custodian standard custody, and MasterCard teams up with Ripple for CBDCs. MasterCard and Ripple are also part of the CPMI group over here. So yes, I think that as we look more closely at Swell's announcements and relationships, I think some pretty big news will be released in October or November of this year. And we need to keep an eye out for that for sure. Let's talk about one of the guests, okay? Let's take a quick look at the speakers and scroll all the way down. Carlos Domingo from Securitize recently talked to Tony Edward about how he thinks crypto won and that safe coins will grow faster than other crypto assets. Look at this, it's about $2.5 trillion if you think about steady coins in crypto, right? Then there are the stable coins worth $150 billion. The first thing I think will happen is that the first crypto will keep growing. However, the safe coins will grow faster because they're likely one of the crypto assets with the best product market fit, right? It makes sense that steady coins grow faster. So let's say crypto goes from $2 trillion to, oh, $10 trillion. Because they grow faster, stable coins will go from $150 billion to $2 trillion. That's the point. The second thing is that vaults are right next to stable coins. Okay, yes, I do think that safe coins are going to grow very quickly as we learn more about them. In addition, I believe they will be an important part of the crypto puzzle, as I believe a lot of the value that comes from loan and borrowing around DeFi 
will be tied to stable coins. But don't forget that steady coins are slowly turning into real money. It's like they're turning into real digital money. Okay, stable coins. I think it was about $12 trillion in just one quarter. Crazy. Oh, I see. I meant $12 trillion. It was about $3 trillion, which is almost $12 trillion in one year. I already said it's crazy. It's not really $12 trillion in a quarter, but it's still pretty crazy. This is because it's really competitive with Visa, MasterCard, and a lot of other companies that handle payments. And the virtual coins are stable. The amount of money and traffic that is moved through stable coins is crazy to me. It's also funny because it's only the beginning. As if we're just getting started with steady coins and the space hasn't even caught on with a lot of people yet. I think about what stable coins will turn into. I think about how big they'll be too. When we talked about stable coins, RLUSD began to be created both on the XRP system and on Ethereum. This makes me very happy. I have been following the tracker for a while now. They were produced on the 21st and 22nd and are the only two that have been made so far. As soon as I think a lot of safe coins are being made, you should definitely keep an eye out for this. Keep in mind that the stable coin is still pretty new. On the other hand, I believe that a lot more of this will be made. Things will get really interesting and fun with both the stable coin and the XRP record once it's no longer just on the test net. I'll tell you why in a moment, but let's talk about the US government. The Federal Reserve is also something we should talk about. Let's go back to December 2023. I want to thank Subjective Views very much. Along with the G20, the US has been working behind the scenes to make cross-border funds faster, cheaper, clearer, and easier to use. Longer term, they will look into bigger changes that will support responsible innovation. Back on December 14th, 2023, this was the Bank of Korea and the IMF Worldwide Meeting. This is one of the speakers. He or she is the US Department of Treasury's Deputy Assistant Secretary for Foreign Financial Markets. Click on this link to watch a five minute video but guys, this movie talks about and talks about a lot of great information. Look it over. Another lesson, payments made across borders affect many areas of both national and foreign policy. This also includes rules for banks, just like they did for Corrigan. There are also questions about privacy and openness, as well as national security. About how to include everyone in the economy and finances, as well as the part a country plays or wants to play in the world economy. Central banks are mostly in charge of payment methods. The payments policy deals with things that aren't usually the job of a central bank. Because of this, a lot of different public and private players need to work together to make progress on payments policy. To do this in the U.S., the U.S. Treasury and the Biden administration have been trying to play a role that is different from that of the Federal Reserve. This group has been talking about the future of money and payments since last fall. It is led by Treasury. This group thinks about what new payment technologies mean for us policy goals in a wider sense. These include making sure the foreign financial system works well, protecting national security, protecting privacy, and making sure everyone has access to money. In this way, our work fits in with the Federal Reserve's main goals and its own work. First, make it easier to send money across borders. The second goal is to make sure that new payment systems and other innovations are safe, reliable, and in line with democracy values and US national interests. On top of that, our job has more specific goals. Our goal is to make sure that the dollar keeps doing all of its jobs in ways that are good for both the US and the rest of the world. We want to help make sure that future payment methods are safe and reliable. While also making the current payment system faster and more efficient, we want to make sure that new payment technologies protect users' privacy, lower the risk of illegal deals, and make sure that everyone has access to payment services. Third lesson, and this is something that Treasury has always said about this subject, strong international norms are needed for both progress on cross-border payments 